Automating tasks in your app can save you hours of work, whether it's backing up your database, sending email notifications to your users, or just cleaning up some data. In Next.js, you can schedule tasks very easily using something like cron jobs. So let's see how we can do that. First, let's install Next.js slash schedule, and then let's register it by saying schedule module dot for root. Then we can finally use the add cron decorator with some expression. We're going to talk about it in a second on top of some method to define it as a task that should be scheduled. So for example, this cron expression means that this task should be run every single second. So if I was to run this, it is going to log starting backup to backup our database every second. Of course, this doesn't make sense in a real case scenario, but this is just to show you that we can specify recurring tasks with cron jobs. If you're not very familiar with cron expressions, that's fine. We're going to go over them briefly. Basically, we have some uh, placeholders here. Usually you might see five instead of six. The sixth one is for seconds. It's optional. But basically, for example, the one to the right specifies the day of the week. For example, one would mean Monday, the first day of the week. For month, it's the second placeholder here. For example, one would mean January. Then we have the day of the month. We have hours, minutes, and then finally seconds. Whenever we use an asterisk, it means every. This is why whenever we have six asterisks, it means every second. Let's take a look at some examples. If you have this expression, if you take a look, everything is an asterisk except the seconds. It's showing 45, meaning wildcard. So for every week of every day of every hour of every minute on the 45th second, this task should run. So every minute, once the second is 45, it should run. And then if you take a look at the second expression here or the third one, we can see that for the minutes we have 10. So our clock should be showing 10 for the minutes digit. And then it should be 10 sharp because the second is zero. And then everything else is a wildcard. So this would mean that every hour at the start of the 10th minute, this task should run. We can also have ranges whenever we use a dash, it means a range. So for example, here we have nine dash 17 on the fourth placeholder. So one, two, three, four. If you take a look here, the fourth placeholder, meaning this one means hours. So if you have 9-17, it means between 9 a.m. and 17 would mean 5 p.m. So this task would run between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And to know the minutes, we can take a look here at this placeholder. Now, whenever we have a slash, it means every or it's a step. So here every 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., this task would run. There's a website called crontab.guru, which can help you. Now here they use five different asterisks instead of six. So here five would mean at every minute if everything is a wild card. Like we said, the first one would be day, month, day of the month, hour, and then minute. We don't have a second here. So day, if it was one, it would mean on Monday. And everything else, if it's an asterisk, then at every minute on Monday. If you had one here, it would mean the first month. So we're just talking about January. So at every minute on Monday in January and so on. Now, memorizing all of that could be very difficult. So thankfully we have something called cron expressions, which is an enum that Nest.js provides for us where we can see a lot of common cron expressions. So for example, every two hours or every four hours or every day at 10 a.m. Every day at, let's say at midnight. So once it's 12 o'clock, we run this task every day. So if you take a look here, we can see that they actually wrote a cron expression, but they made it easier for us by providing it in the form of an enum. Let's, for example, use this cron expression dot every 10 seconds. Now, I want you to know something here. When we run this, it's not going to count 10 seconds from the server runtime, but rather depending on the clock. So now, as you can see, we got starting backup because the seconds of the clock is a multiple of 10. So for every 10 seconds, whether it's 10, 20, 30, or 40, like right now, as you can see, we got a backup. So it doesn't really rely on the server start time, but rather the actual clock time. So now when it's 50, starting backup. Now after 10 seconds, once it's the minutes is 47, it's also gonna start another backup, as you can see now. Here is just to show you that it's precise on the seconds of the clock time. Okay, not the server runtime. On top of cron, we also have interval and timeout. So for interval, for example, we can run recurring tasks, for example, 10,000 milliseconds, meaning 10 seconds. This method would run every 10 seconds, but here it doesn't depend or rely on the clock time. 
but rather on the startup time of our server. So if I were to, to start my server right now, it will start counting 10 seconds right away. We can also use timeout whenever we need to run a task once only, so it's not a recurring task. So we can just use timeout 15, for example, 15,000, meaning after 15 seconds, after running our server, this task is only going to run once. Now, if for any reason we needed to turn off our cron jobs or intervals and maybe keep our timeouts enabled in our app, we can do that inside of our module registration. So inside of the forward method, we can pass in an option of cron jobs, intervals, and timeout. By default, it doesn't take anything. They are optional. That, this would mean that they are all enabled and they would all run. However, we can specify which ones should be turned off. So for example, cron jobs false, intervals false. I'm gonna keep timeouts to true. And now I'm gonna run my server and let's see what happens. We're gonna see that after five seconds, we're gonna get clearing tokens. So this method, this timeout is going to get executed as you can see. However, after 10 seconds, we're gonna see that we're not gonna actually execute backup DB or send emails because we have turned them off here. Now, if you take a look at cron, we can see that we can also pass in some options. So not just an expression, but also an object of options. For example, we could say disabled. We can set this to true to disable this specific cron job. Maybe we have different cron jobs. We need to disable some of them, keep some of them running and so on. We can do that here. We can also do that programmatically. I will show you how in a bit. We can see that we also can specify a name for our cron job. And this will be uh, pretty helpful in a bit. So I'm gonna say, uh, backup job for example and we can also specify the time zone that we should be using here and we can also use something like utc offset if you wanted to i previously said that we can dynamically create cron jobs and control them so we can easily do that by just injecting scheduler registry we can do it in a service in a controller anywhere anywhere you need it and if you take a look we can see we have add cron job add interval add timeout delete cron job does exist, get cron jobs. We have a lot of methods. So let's say we wanted to actually get this backup job here. We specified a name so that we can get it. Let's say dot get cron job. And then here we specify the job name. Now let's just assign it to a variable here. If we take a look at job, we can actually stop the job. We can start it or resume it. We can check the last date when it was running. So as you can see, we can actually do a lot. So inside of the tasks controller, I went ahead and created some route handlers to create and manipulate our cron job. So I have a create backup job route handler here. All it does is it creates a new cron job. So here we need to specify the cron job expression. In my case, I said every five seconds and everything else is a wildcard. So this job would run every five seconds. And then here we need to specify the method that should get executed. So the job that should actually get done. So here we had starting backup. This was our method being executed. You can assume this is some database backup task or something. And then here we, we would need to use this scheduler registry instance and then add a cron job. So we would call add cron job. And here we would need to specify a name. So we could say backup job, for example. And then we pass in the job that we just created here. Now to start the job, we need to say job.start. And that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this cron job and those intervals. And then here, let's just remove those options so everything is enabled by default. And now if we start our server, as you can see, nothing is gonna be running after five seconds. We have not created our dynamic cron job yet. So let's open Postman. And now let's go ahead and call this route handler. So I'm gonna say send, backup job created and started. And now if you take a look, running backup job, and if you remember, we said that it takes a look at the clock, not the start time of our server. So here for every five seconds, meaning every time the seconds is a multiple of five. So let's open the clock. If you take a look, every time, for example, 15, we got the job. Now when the second is 20, we're also gonna run the job. As you can see, 25, 30, 35, 40. So for every multiple of five, it is going to run our backup job. Now we said that you can actually pause this job dynamically. For example, in the pause backup job, what we're doing is we're using the schedule registry to get our cron job. Again, we are using the cron job name here that we assigned when creating it. So backup job, and then we call job.stop to stop the job. So let's try to call this endpoint and see what happens. Pause backup job. 
gonna hit send we got backup job paused if you take a look at the logs now as you can see the time is going but the job is not being run anymore it's not being executed so now let's go ahead and call resume backup job this method just gets the job just like we did before get cron job by name and then it says job.start meaning it's going to resume it now call resume backup job let's hit send you got backup job resumed if you go back to the logs we can see that again we are now getting uh, new logs and finally to delete a job we can call delete backup job this is a round handler that we created but basically we just call the delete cron job method on the schedule registry instance and then we pass in the name of our job so let's go ahead and call that as you can see now it has resumed since we called resume backup job let's go ahead and call delete and this should be a delete if we hit send backup job deleted if you go back to our logs this is the last log if we wait a few seconds if you take a look at the clock as you can see no more jobs are running now so this is how we can dynamically control our jobs create new jobs delete stop resume pause we can also change the time or the cron expression for our jobs and so on now let's talk a bit about error handling let's say we had a cron job that we declared using the cron decorator and it should run every 10 seconds so every time the seconds of the clock is a multiple of 10 so 10 20 30 and so on and we're just trying to backup our database but then something happened and an error occurred so our code threw an error what would happen let's go ahead and run the server and see what happens by default so as you can see now after the second is a multiple of 10 we got this error scheduler is the context and we got a proper log error backup failed and this is the error that we threw here but as you can see it was handled by nest.js so nest.js actually wrapped our method that was decorated with cron with a try catch block and then it logged it as you can see here now we can do a lot so for example we could add our own try catch block here and then whenever we catch an error we might maybe save to db save that error to the database maybe we could send uh, the message to a queue so here for example we can be using something like rabbit mq or uh, bull mq and then send those failed tasks to a queue and then they would be consumed somewhere else with some retrial mechanism you can do a lot this is really uh, up to you here but the main point is that by default cron timeouts and intervals those methods decorated with those decorators are going to be wrapped by try catch blocks by default automatically by nest.js and the errors would be logged by a logger and you can see them properly and you can of course handle them yourselves by adding your own try catch block handing the errors as you see fit saving some data to the database sending the failed jobs to a queue retry them and so on cron jobs are incredibly powerful whenever you need to automate some tasks based on a specific schedule so like we've seen we can use a cron job if you want to back up our database once a month every monday at midnight and so on if you want to send some daily email reminders to check if a user's subscription uh, is going to expire anytime soon if you want to delete some unused data such as expired tokens maybe every day at midnight maybe once a week so for straightforward operations we can automate them easily with cron jobs however if you are dealing with more complex or high volume tasks it would be better to actually use queue systems like bullmq so for example if you had some bulk uploads or maybe you needed to process thousands of images generate thousands of reports and it needs to happen on demand then you could use something like queue systems to divide that work onto different workers so that you don't tire out your main system that way you can also take advantage of things like retry mechanisms delays uh, backoffs prioritizing tasks based on some priority and so on so if you're interested in seeing something like that, which is very important for scaling your Nest.js application, I highly recommend you watch my BullMQ video. I'm gonna keep a link down below. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.